What a race we have in store for us today, with a competitive field ready to do battle once again. Hold on to the edge of your seat. It's time for another Formula One Grand Prix. Hello there, everyone, and welcome to the Austrian Grand Prix, where today we'll be taking Charles Leclerc's Ferrari for a 100% race, which is going to be a lot of fun. And as you can see, that weather looks a little bit scary. Heavy rain expected towards the tail end of this race, which I'm sure is going to keep things very, very spicy. As we head out for the formation lap, getting some temperature into these soft compound tires, and it looks like there's a lot of different strategies being used here by the AI. You see three different compounds just in the bottom five cars alone. As we form the grid, five red lights, and we're off getting held for a while there, but the initial launch, not too bad. Could have been better, but fortunately for us, Schumacher, a little bit slower off the line, allowing us to go down the inside, showing the nose, riding that sausage curb, not taking any floor damage though, so not too bad, but also not the best of starts. Should be able to get past at least the two Williams at the back though, diving down the inside once more, sending it on Schumacher. Getting past him, heading into the corner. That sharp right hairpin. Getting a decent exit up into P16. So a decent start here to this race. The AI for this one on 100, I believe. So not completely OP, but also still quite competitive. Up into P15 now. Guan Yu Zhou up ahead in the Alfa Romeo. And we'll be looking to catch him at a rate of knots. The back mark is significantly slower than us. And we'll want to cut through the field as quickly as possible. And really maximize the performance of these soft tire compounds. Getting held up will be costly for our overall strategy. Especially in an attempt to catch those up front. Which are going to be setting much faster lap times on us at the start of this race with that clean air. Approaching Magnussen now. That's another clean move down the inside. Ricardo and Gasly side by side up ahead, as well as I believe Bottas and Sonoda just ahead too. And then going side by side into the hairpin will be very slow. Might be able to pull off an undercut here, but unfortunately we don't time our run very well there. Piece of a front wing falling off there. I don't know if that was Gasly or Sonoda, but it looked like one of the Alpha Tauris. And that may mean one of them will be going slow heading in to this second sector. Still running side by side, two pairs up ahead. And we're trying to get past because we know this will hold us up quite a bit. Using a lot of our overtake, but unfortunately, finding it tricky. Mercado and Gasly go single file as well as those ahead, but we get a good run through the switchback. Getting Ricardo into this really quick right hander, but it's really awkward. Sonoda looking to enter the pits alongside Bottas as they made contact earlier. Gasly as well, hitting his teammates. They may have gotten damage there as well, but we finally get past Ricardo, and now we're on the offensive, looking to pass Gasly here on lap three of 71. And that is us up into P8 color sign, set to 109, and we'll see what kind of time we are setting. Our best so far was only a 113 due to traffic, but not a bad lap there. Fast forwarding on to lap number 8, reaching some of the front markers now, who are still battling, giving us an opportunity to catch up. Russell and Hamilton both starting on the hard tyre compound as... Oh, Hamilton goes off the track. We almost hit him, but we do survive, and that's an additional position. Norris scrapping up ahead with Perez, who I believe will be coming into the pits. Another awkward entry as Russell almost hits us as well. So the Mercedes being very, very dangerous, but we do get past a couple more positions up into fifth now. Norris will be under pressure as well. That McLaren, not too quick, and he loses the rear end a little bit, exiting the first corner. Could be so careful mounting that curb on the outside, and we just whiz past him. The straight line speed of the Ferrari is quite strong. 
Unfortunately, though, we do go deep into the hairpin. We lock up over the Aramco sponsorship there on the outside. We re-enter. We don't go over the sausage curb. Don't want any floor damage. Conceding that position once more, but the last overtake was relatively breezy. So I would expect any further attempts to be pretty easy as well. You can see we're already gaining pretty significantly here on Norris. Even though at this point of the race, the soft tire compounds are starting to go off a little bit, but that means that his will as well. Now, run out of the switch back through the third sector. Not quite strong enough. We show the nose, but that won't really be enough. Down to fifth now for the final corner. We're going to get a good run. Overtake enabled. DRS as well, so the rear wing open. And we just fly past. Should be a pretty easy overtake down the inside. We just pull it up. And that's us up into P4. Fast forward down to lap 14. And you can see that the tyres need some serious wear now up to around 30%. And we could feel that grip starting to fall off. So we tell the team we want to box this lap. Ocon and Alonso in positions 1 and 2 respectively. The Alpine <laughs> absolutely crazy on this track <laughs> with that straight line speed. And that will no doubt be a threat throughout this race as we fire it down the inside. Looking to get a clean run in towards the pit lane, carry as much speed as possible and just pull it up before the line. That's exactly what we do. P14, or well, pardon me, lap 14 in our first pit stop of the race. We'll be jumping onto another set of soft compound tyres. The whole strategy really does revolve around us being as aggressive as possible on these tyres, not being too worried about tyre life and looking to just get as much raw pace out of them as possible. Exiting the pit lane and fast forwarding to lap 16. We're still in the points, P10. Perez, Magnuson and Guan Yu Joe up ahead and we are looking to make a triple overtake on this straight leading into the hairpin. Three wide, I think, as we take the inside line and break as much as we can, spam shifting down to first gear. Some contact made there with Guan Yu Joe. We get a warning for that collision, but we soldier on. Fortunately, we don't get any damage, and now we tuck behind Perez. The Red Bull's relatively quick on this track. But again, we are significantly faster than them, so we'll want to get past them as quickly as possible. That gap now down to three tenths. He struggles for traction outside of the first corner, and this should be a pretty breezy take overtake down the straight with DRS enabled and overtake. We get it done. Pulling up just in time. P7 now. As we look to continue our pace in this race. But it was at this point where I realised I forgot to change my fuel before the race. And we are going to be overfueled now for the remainder of it. Plus four at the moment. If it rains later, that is no doubt going to blow out even further. So that's an unfortunate pace deficit we will have. Meanwhile, Alonso out of the race. Saw him on the outside there. Unfortunate there for Alpine, who, again, really good pace on this track, but we'll take the position. As we fast forward to lap 27, up into fourth now. Tyre becoming a little bit of an issue, and we're approaching some back markers now. Stroll and Guan Yu Zhou not on the pace required here, and due to the lap being so short, I'm sure we'll be overtaking quite a few lap cars in this one. Hamilton is up ahead, 1.4 seconds, and I don't think... Expecting the rain to hit us any time now. Drys definitely seem like the fastest tyre at the moment. And I don't think he's pitted, and probably rightly so. The Mercedes looking to extend these tyres up until when that rain hits, which it sounds like it will be hitting any moment now. Guan Yu Joe gets out of the way, thanks to him. Ocon and Hamilton scrapping up ahead. And surely the Mercedes won't want to be too keen on overtaking or battling too much here and use it as our opportunity to activate overtake. DRS as well, down start finish line. Hamilton though holds it around the outside. So those hard still with decent grip. Our soft's falling off, but much like Hamilton, well, you also want to extend our tyres. A pit stop here would probably be a pretty significant waste of time. We just have to be pretty conservative here and ensure that we do not spin. Probably just have to 
settle with position four at the moment. Lap 30 though, and it's starting to drizzle. The question will be how long can we last before we need to pit for intermediate tyres? When will that crossover point be? As we get told, our tyre grip's going to fall off, but I think that was due to wear. And our engineer now telling us it's time to pit for intermediate tyres and we'll shadow Hamilton into the pit lane. Russell as well pitting, so the Mercedes will be hoping that they won't conflict, but I think the gap will be more than enough. Entering now to fit the intermediate tyres. Currently position three in the pit lane, and we'll see what the pit stop's like. Pretty clean there from Ferrari, but we do get held up a little bit on exit. I think maybe we could have jumped to the Mercedes, but unfortunately that won't be the case. A 2.7 second pit stop as we look to exit the pits and try and get some temperature into these inters as quickly as possible. The track already significantly wetter than it was even when we entered the pit lane. So a bit of a storm here over the track and confirmation there with DRS being disabled that this is intermediate conditions. So a good call there from the team to bring us in when they did another lap on the softs and we probably would have lost quite a bit of time. Hamilton though already charging ahead as we look to bring that gap back but unfortunately that will be interrupted by the safety car as we look to enter the hairpin is this where the car's gone off max verstappen disqualified and he's beached on the curb the hometown favorite in max verstappen has found himself beached on the sausage curb on the exit of the hairpin we'll see what happened maybe he was helped around it doesn't look like there's anyone close by. As he enters the hip, he just loses the rear end. And as he tries to recover the car, gets it beached. New feature in F122, and due to just how low these cars are being driven or set up. The rain looks like it's going to be getting much lighter over the next 10 to 15 minutes. There should be more grip, but don't expect a dry track yet. Inter seems to be the fastest tyre for now. It is possible to beach those cars, and a quick update there on the weather. The team telling me that we might see the weather get a bit better soon. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. Keep in mind as well, DRS is also broken, but in wet conditions, doesn't really matter too much. So that's not an issue. But what's happening here? Our teammate is in the pits. Have the team made a mistake here and not called us in? We'll see what tyres they elect to go on. If they've gone onto the wets and these conditions continue to worsen. Oh my god. The Ferrari strategists, what are they doing to Leclerc? This is absolutely ridiculous. The rain looks like it's going to be getting much lighter over the next 10 to 15 minutes. There should be more grip, but don't expect a dry track yet. It's hard to say if it is all wet to right now. And the team again telling me the conditions are meant to get better, but now they say they don't know which tyre is better. So we like to ghost Russell into the pits, and we'll fit the wet compound tyre because on these laps, even while trying to keep temps up, uh, the tyres were just awful. It felt like driving on ice. So we're forced to make the call now to enter the pits. Fortunately, under the safety car, I don't think we're going to lose too much ground, but disappointing nonetheless that that call could not have been made earlier. But we just have to try and shake that off now. On to lap 40. So we're reaching, some, reaching, I guess, the back half, well and truly, of this Grand Prix. Yeah, we will exit in P5. As we prepare for the restart, and you can see just how difficult these conditions are. Visibility, even on the T-cam, really not great. It's gone, you do! It's lapped. And in awkward position, Snowder as well, holding up the pack. Probably not the worst, though, as Russell also was holed up. And we're going to look to maybe attack here with overtake down the straight. Maybe try and dive it down the inside, but very wet out there and we don't want to do that. Senator showing those. Get out of the way, please. Fortunately, we don't make contact. And you see just how difficult traction is all the way up to sixth gear, having to short shift, having to be so careful not to activate overtake too early. Otherwise, you will spin. Very unforgiving. Understeering quite a bit here on corner entry. I believe I adjusted the diff to try and get some better traction, but that does mean through the corners you are going to have this understeer, especially while the tyres are a little bit cold on the restart. You know, hoping that will improve as the laps go on and these tyres really start to activate. Russell going a little bit slow, but 
Unfortunately, we get poor traction. And I think we just have to try and tuck behind here and hope that he makes a mistake and hope that his race pace isn't as good as ours. Not the best run into the final corner. Again, we're just being so delicate on that throttle. And Russell not really giving an inch so far. We are in position five, so we've got to be happy with that as we go deep into the first corner. No floor damage though, but unfortunately that does give Russell an opportunity to skate away. Finding over a second through that corner, but looking to maybe perform an overtake here on Bottas, who is lapped, or being lapped. This is quite a bit of time there. Now, we'll try and use Bottas as a bit of a slipstream here on the exit of the corner. Overtake now activated as Russell potentially now looking a little bit vulnerable. But again, through this second sector in particular, the understeer was really rough. And if I didn't adjust the diff as much as I did, then corner exit would be really not ideal. So we find ourselves in a rough position. We're also plus six on fuel. So we're carrying way more weight than we should be as well, which... Again, was a mistake on my part. Nonetheless, though, Russell very slow and he has a poor exit. But we can't floor it. We don't want to bin it this deep into the race. Entering the last few corners now. Feel very threatening here. Maybe we can make a run onto the start-finish line. Russell looking a little bit vulnerable as we activate overtake. We have so much battery charge remaining here right on the tail of Russell who looks to defend, but we go around the outside. Can we make it stick? We just pull it up in time. Fantastic move there. I don't know how we found the grip for that. I guess the outside line in wet conditions. Still quite strong. Plus 40 on two. Well, lap 55 now. Position four. So we're still in the hunt for a podium position. And Perez is only about 1.4 seconds up the road. So sooner rather than later, we should be within striking distance here. But it does look like the conditions might be improving a little bit and I think we were expecting clear conditions at the end of the race whether or not the track dries up we'll have to wait and see but it looks like those understeer issues from before it could be time to come in for a fresh set of boots we're seeing a lot less spray at this point and opinion here on the pit wall is that we'll probably be okay on the intermediates obviously might be improving as the team contemplates jumping onto intermediate tyres but I think the best decision here is to ghost Ooh! is to ghost what the rest of the field is doing. If we go in for inters and they don't, I don't know if we'll recover that time and critically recover that track position. So we're probably just going to have to stick it out here on the wet tyres and hope that the AI they aren't super strong. But as you can see, Paris has extended that gap. But we did make a couple of mistakes there, so we'll have to see whether or not that does develop. But unfortunately, it does. On to lap 59 now, and Paris out to 6.8 seconds. So in these intermediate conditions, unfortunately, we just can't keep pace. As you can see on the tyre temps, they are starting to overheat a little bit. And the performance drop-off has been quite big. Russell now only two seconds behind. We'll have to be careful of that. As you can just see on the exit, we have absolutely zero grip. So we're hoping these conditions turn dry as quickly as possible so we can get back onto the soft compound and maybe attack Perez on the final few laps. Russell now only two tenths behind as the new strategy is confirmed so we'll be coming in for slicks at the end of this lap and we want to get ahead of Russell here into the pit lane able to do so as you can see those signs and Hamilton elects not to pit so they could lose a significant amount of time here on this lap we'll have to wait and see whether it's enough for us to catch them it would be a pretty big drop off if we did as we just pull it up in time for the pit lane Lap 62, jumping off the wet compound tyre onto a fresh set of softs. So we should have really strong pace in the last 10 laps of this race. The question will be though, is it strong enough to get us onto the podium? Unfortunately, Russell jumped us in the pit stop, so that's one more position we'll need to gain as we exit in position 5 into clean air. And we're going to be straight onto overtake, trying our best to catch Russell. But unfortunately, he does get DRS from the previous activation zone. So we're going to have to wait until a couple more laps before we can potentially attack him. Interestingly enough, Perez and Albon jumping onto the intermediate tyre. 
I'll have to wait and see whether that was the right call, but the gap only about 14 and a half seconds to him, so I don't think he'll be able to stay in front of us as Signs dives into the pit lane. We're entering the second sector now, so unfortunately I don't think we'll be able to catch him. Still trying to find temps in these tyres and Russell running away a little bit. I think that extra fuel that we have on board is really not helping us towards the end here, where the AI cars should, in theory, be lighter than us. The track as well is still a little bit damp, so conditions not ideal. But unfortunately, our outlap, not amazing, just average, really. And we we hit the curb, exiting the final corner, so that's some floor damage now to contend with. And that means we're going to lose a lot of time. And unfortunately, as we fast forward to sunny skies in the final lap, Russell has extended that gap out to 3.8 seconds. Ocon behind. 4.3, so the Alpine still with decent pace. But it doesn't look like a podium finish is going to be on the agenda today, which is a real shame. I think where we lost that opportunity was probably extending the extreme wet compound too long as the track was drying. And maybe if we jumped on intermediates, it would have been helpful, but it was just a really awkward position that we found ourselves in. Nonetheless, though, P4... It's okay. And hopefully everyone enjoyed the video. If you want to watch my 100% race in Abu Dhabi, you can do so by clicking the card in the top right. And if you did enjoy the video, please be sure to like and subscribe. It'd help me out a bunch. But as we round the final corner, that will be P4 in the Austrian Grand Prix. So close to that podium, but it's not meant to be. Driver of the day, though. So we'll take that. Smiling faces on the pit wall, then, after that superb win here in Spielberg. And rightly so. A brilliant effort from the whole team. What do you think it was today, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition? A reliable car, that was the most important factor here. This was a real battle of attrition, and you could tell those at the front were trying to find a balance between running their outright pace and taking care of the car to reach the end. Ferrari are at it again. An excellent performance at today's Grand Prix, and they're certainly a team that know what they're doing out there. After an incredible day of racing, who was your driver of the day, Ant? Charles Leclerc showed exactly how to manage yourself out on the track today. He was almost flawless out there. Incredible stuff. Well, what an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one.